All right, here's what I want. Obviously, I love Shah Rukh Khan hanging upside down. Yeah. I actually want him and Pathan shirtless. <laughs> hanging upside down? Well, he doesn't have to be. I can hang him upside down myself. But I just, I, his ripped body, which he is actually ripped for it. Whether he took roids for it or not, I mean, it doesn't really matter. You're in a movie. And it was but, lighting. And the, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of lighting. No, there's a lot then, of photos. Like, he's yeah. actually ripped. Yeah. I don't know if it was natural. It doesn't really matter. And I hope, he, I hope he's not smoking anymore. Uh, he probably is. Oh. He's, he's. But it's also to get in that kind of shape and still smoke, that's crazy. Got to be tough. If he if he's still smoking, hopefully he's not. Obviously, it's better bad for you and everyone else. In yeah, the planet. exactly. <laughs> but anyways, I want like if somebody has like one of him like just shirtless, long hair, beard. It's never looked better. Same same thing with any of the ladies. No. Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction. It's cool. Busha. Phone stamp. Shake on the hall. Dunblock. Ha. 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 It's familiar. Anyways. Uh... <laughs> what are we doing today, Rick? <laughs> what was that? Just me doing something. Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Today we got a uh, Nasir Adin Shah hey, interview. Hey, there he is. This is a interview from 2019. Uh, it's titled Films Don't Change the Way th Theater Does. No, challenge you. Challenge, sorry, challenge you. Oh, as an actor? Yeah, apparently. Oh. Uh, read this. A 2019 interview of the thespians and real life couple Nasir Adin Shah is the founder of Mumbai's Motley Theater Group in 79. Motley's been a considerable influence on contemporary Indian theater over the years. You have seen Rotten Apothic Shah as the mom in the movies Kapoor and okay, Sons. Cool. Yeah, and Jayesh by Jordar. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, Rotten Apothic Shah is the daughter of Dina Pathak, whom you've seen playing the role of the pretend mom in the classic comedy movie Gol Mall, okay. starring Utbal Dutt and uh, Pelikar. Rotten's sister is Supriya Pathak, who is Shahid Kapoor's stepmom. You love Supriya as the mafia mom from Ramlila. And I must say, I love the spelling of theater in that entire piece. Wait. So... Nasirdin Shah's wife. Mm -hmm. Sister is Shahid's stepmom? Correct. Yes. Nasirdin Shah's wife's sister His is sis Shahid Kapoor's stepmom. Ah! If you tell me the name, I'll, it will ring a bell. Supriya. Oh, yes. Yeah, Supriya Pathak. Pathak. It, uh, and that's Shahid Kapoor's stepmom. And then uh, Nasirdin Shah's wife is Ratna. Ratna Pathak. Yeah, Ratna Pathak Shah. Uh, that's one heck of an acting family. Yeah, no you got kidding. There. Uh, especially by the ladies. Anyway, so this is a little uh, interview of him talking about theater specifically. Awesome. Uh, which I know you hate. Here we go. Uh, so, man, thank you so much for being in the Queen, and thank you for doing this. It's been 40 years since the first production of Motley and when you look back, how do you look at all the plays, how do you look at all the times? They've been mostly good times as far as theatre is concerned because our livelihoods never depended on it. My attachment to theatre is my hobby, a hobby which I'm very passionate about. We've had a very stimulating journey, very educative and great fun. But since your childhood, you, I mean, did you watch plays and you were interested in it versus yeah, always, like no, movies? Because when movies and plays, both and cricket, all three I found equally magical. I never got to act in a play till I was 14 years old. Uh, and the moment I went on stage, I knew this is where I belong. I never got to watch too much cricket because only test matches were played then. I don't know if you know about this. <laughs> you know, and they were played in places like Bombay, Calcutta, Madras, uh, and so on, where I lived in small towns. So I never saw any cricket, but played a lot of it, and it was bliss. And watching movies, I've been watching movies since I was, I think, three. My dad, who was otherwise quite a Puritan, for some reason, allowed us to watch a lot of movies. Mm. Yeah, because otherwise Interesting. Bollywood is like a no-no, I'm guessing, right? Yeah, it was Hollywood. It, it was mainly Hollywood. It, Hollywood, war movies or cartoons, and in the movies, Dilip Kumar movies. He was discerning, huh? <laughs> I grew up in a theatre family in Bombay. 
And so mine is the exact opposite experience. I grew up backstage practically. And my parents had no qualms about letting me see very bad theatre, but had terrible qualms about me seeing movies. So I ended up seeing no movies. It was my aunt, my mom's younger sister, and her husband. They were the movie buffs. And they were part of the early uh, film uh, club. club movement in Mumbai called Suchitra. Film Society, Society used to be called. And that was the only way one could access films that were not Hollywood. In the, in the, or not coming to the theatres. Yeah. Mm. So I ended up watching a lot of Russian films, for example. I can't say I was uh, starry-eyed about the whole business because I always saw the backstage. Sim my mom started acting in movies, so I went with her to shooting. So I always saw the non-attractive part of the business or the non-glamorous part of the business. I sometimes feel sorry that I never felt that magical quality about performance, but I didn't until I started performing myself. But was it like in those days it was considered uh, nicer to be a part of theatre than Hindi? So there's always been like snooty people who look down on anything popular. So yeah, sure, when films were popular, then people looked down on films. If theatre was more popular, people have looked down on theatre also before that. Well, in my family, it was just unthinkable to uh, talk of uh, trying to be an actor. And I never confessed it to anyone, <laughs> except to my two brothers who encouraged me. And then somehow the news found its way to my father by the time I had finished with my college. And then I could do what I pleased. Post the time that you started Motley, you joined a little later, right? Like just a little later. I was in the NSD. Right. Uh, in 79, I finished mm. with NSD. It's a good looking man and woman so right there. Back then, I joined up. But there was nothing really like joining, joining as such, yeah. you know. I mean, it's never been like that. I mean, Nasir and Ben got together and said, let's do a play. So let's take this one, that one. That's how we've always functioned. Let's get friends who let's get friends. enjoy spending time with. There's no membership, as Ratna said. That's uh, waiting for Gato, right? I lot. think so. So we've never had that problem. You know, so I read an interview of yours where you said that now when you look back, you felt like you weren't as good an actor as you are today. And you said that theatre had a huge role in actually uh, making you a better actor. So what is it that it does that you think when you then start working in movies helps you? I don't know if the, uh, the skills required of the actor, the basic skills change very much depending on the medium. It all depends on the material um, in, in, that you work using. But, but, but you see, it's also a question of practice, you know, quite simply. For films, even rehearsal is unheard of, you know. Yeah. Right. And even at times, I've met actors, some pretty good ones, who are allergic to rehearsal even before the shot. Spontaneity. Yeah, spontaneity. Yeah, all this yeah, nonsense about spontaneity. Yeah. <laughs> but doing theatre, you cannot just get onto the stage and spout dialogue. You know? No. You've got to, you've got to, so it's a question of riyaz. It's riyaz, and, it's discipline, yeah. it's learning to work with others. Skillful actors like, say, uh, oh. you know, a Johnny Lever, for example, who I consider a highly skillful actor in his own field, of course, would be brilliant on the stage if he would submit to the disciplines. <laughs> 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 you know? And he's great in movies as well. <laughs> he does the same thing. And also the script. I mean, what, what kind yeah. of a demand yeah. does a script like Golmal 3 get? <laughs> the greatest demand it does make is one of patience, mm -hmm. which is a tremendous virtue and one should learn it. So that's one. It's mostly waiting on set. Yep. And for your career. And wait. <laughs> and, wait. Yeah. and that's why film acting is so tiring because this waiting kills me. You know? I, yeah. I after a day's shoot more exhausted than after an eight hour rehearsal. Absolutely. What do you think is, has been characteristic of a Martin production, like the plays that you pick, that you feel Low budgets. <laughs> we found that the audiences are largely young. So obviously, the storytelling format is one that seems to attract young people. The stories have a lot of humor. And uh, though they are Urdu and they are set in a particular, they were written at a particular time, they're terribly contemporary stories. Ismat, I, I, I don't think there are too many contemporary writers who can quite match up with her sense of fun and sexual abandon and complete non-judgmentalness. She's fantastic. You know, I have to say, so I saw Aurat 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 and Prithvi and it was a packed audience. So I was just wondering that, uh, it, of course, you most people think that, you know, people want to watch movies and that's what, I mean, that's the obvious choice of entering for most people. So then in that situation, how do you nurture this? And, just uh, and I really enjoy just keeping on doing it. So sometimes you get full houses, yeah. sometimes, sometimes we you get full, Sometimes we get 20 people in the audience. 
You keep doing for it. For aurat, 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 one of those run, you know, runs. So, Paisa Vasool is basically the bottom line, no? Yeah. Why do they flock to Salman Khan movies without hesitation? Because they know it's Paisa Vasool. Amir Khan, they'll think twice, you know? <laughs> yeah, they're thinking, man. More than that. So, the cerebral yeah. aspect puts... Ah, the cerebral yeah. aspect. Yeah, oh, well, uh, and they might jo- get put off yeah. and bother me. Johnny, <laughs> well, next time again they go. Johnny back. packs the Shan Mukhan in the hall by himself for a solo performance. There's 2,000 people. <laughs> they know it's Pesa I know What's that. What's Pesa No idea. maybe? Or, or, uh, maybe, or yeah. Performed to a, an audience of 2,000 people probably wouldn't work. Because the form is alien. Mm-hmm. That of storytelling. You know, we've done Ismat Abba Ke Naam, which we are very proud of. And we've had people who understood very good Urdu and have lived the kind of lives of those things, but they didn't get the play at all because they, they, the form is alien of just one person sitting there and telling us, Why should we? I don't know. Considering that's the first form of entertainment any of us have seen. Yeah. Mom telling a story. It makes a demand on the audience. On, the, on your mind. They can't yeah. just sit back yeah. and say, ha, 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 you know, they have to say, okay, what's being said here? This is something. Why is everybody laughing? I'm missing out, you know, so yeah. does, it's a demanding. What's the right kind of theater or audience etiquette? Because so, I, when I was there, I remember this, these, a bunch of people just reacting so loudly to your play. Yeah. And I thought that must be great for the actors because it's not like, always. So <laughs> I, I was just wondering what is the right, what is, or according to you, is good theater etiquette? Well, Keep your mobile phones yeah, off. Mo- phones yeah, phones off, no hard Time candies and wrappers. <laughs> and listen, and if you don't like what you're hearing, just quietly get up and go away now. We don't mind. Yeah, that's the problem. Don't leave, you know, they ah, sit there and they'll be on their, on their phone. That's but worse. There's something we theatre actors have to live with. We cannot complain about this. I grew up watching people walk in and out of Gujarati Natak constantly. And giant social group kind of show if it will happen, then the food will come and eat the food. And then the whole lot goes off. You said this thing really funny about how somebody told you that hey the play was so nice but it was so long <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was beautiful it was beautiful it was excruciatingly long theater <laughs> <laughs> you need to know a great deal about it you can't just sit down and as Ratna said tell the story or say so and so was very good and so and so was not so good I so wish there we was. We don't have uh, such a. We have not cultivated, and now I don't think we are going to because we don't like criticism of any kind. We only want acceptance. Bhakti bhav, bas utna hi chahiye abhi humko. So this is a very difficult and dangerous state for our society and certainly for our arts. Do you think that some of that might want reflect in the work because it may attract a certain audience or a younger audience, a certain political comment that you would like to make or a social comment? Because of what you see, or are the plays anyways doing it? I think the plays are doing it. I I, I don't feel the need to tom tom about my political commitment and that you know I only, only do plays which are political. I think uh, there's there's politics in everything, mm-hmm. including in relationships. Right. Yeah. You know, and to me that's far more interesting than the, the uh, yeah than an outward exactly. disorder, yeah. Yeah. and the doings of some corrupt man. You know who's in power. No, because I know that every time you have made a comment, I don't think you're on social media, but Twitter goes on, goes crazy. And good, good. अच्छा है ना क्या हो रहा है? इस बार नहीं बातें होती रहती हैं. But it's it's so silly this entire conversation, um, this entire mess that we are in just now. That the less we talk about it and the less importance we give it, the better it is. Yeah. Everyone, make up your own minds, yeah. Zara. I'm, I'm amused to pro- at the trolling that happens to me. It just amuses me, and I, I, I invariably say like, I like very much what you said. <laughs> <laughs> on what platform do you say that? Or on, on Facebook? Or on Facebook? Okay. Twitter is quite ridiculous because Twitter <laughs> though. It's I mean, just a couple of days ago, there's this guy who tweeted about how he didn't like a certain uh, delivery man because yeah. he was from a certain religion. <laughs> And you had the audacity to put it on Twitter. Yeah. How you lovely! Know, I, mean, I say thank you very much to him. Look at how many people are talking about it. Look at what is yeah. being said. The man has shown his place. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. There's a lot of filth in all of us. We hmm. all have to let it out. Great shirt. And then there's a lot of filth, there's there's a lot of filth in all of us. Learn how to think again. This gandagi should not be bottled up. Isko bahar nikalo. Manto also said that. And that's why I think Mando is not hazir here that we are going to be doing. And if you haven't come and seen it, you must come and see it. It's I love her passion. Play. It's so relevant in today's time. And he says that. Do you find these times are going to be hard for art? Oh yes, and great for art. 
Oh. Wait for that. Maybe not immediately. Maybe 10 years down the line. Because this is the first time a generation is actually seeing what it feels like to be misruled. Mm. Your generation is the first real generation that is feeling hopeless. Mm. Like the people felt just before independence. Mm. That sense of despair. Ki how long will we carry on in this horrible state? I'm afraid it's going to be tough, but it may be necessary. And I have a feeling we'll come out better. Because again, there are there have never been so many educated people in India. And so many young educated people in India. And hopefully the rest of us will die off quickly. I love that old man thing. <laughs> that Sarah just, okay, how do I get it? Yeah. How do I take how the mic it, off? How do I get this off? But also, did he say anything about film challenging you the way theater does? He had a, sen a sentence. What was it? Oh, so, man. Oh, I thank didn't, you so I didn't. much for being on the Queen, and thank you for doing it. The, 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 the processes of discipline, patience, okay. and rehearsal. Gotcha. That you don't have to have those uh, disciplines in film acting. Mm -hmm. And so they're a couple, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah, tell. You can tell. They're, they're actually... I love her. Yeah, she's great. Yes. Oh, well, we've liked her in everything she's been in so far. Yeah. Uh, her performances, at least. Um, but you could tell, like, in, in the beginning of uh, When Harry Met Sally... And throughout the film, they all, they have multiple couples mm -hmm. talk about yeah, about and, their relationship. And they're actors, and, but yeah. that's kind of what it felt like. Yeah. Some of them had been together for forty years or sixty years. Yeah, and that's what have they been together that long? I think they have been. They showed the picture of them when they started the theater company way back in like nineteen seventy three. That's awesome. So but the fact yeah, that they know each other so well, and she seems more like the at least in this subject matter one that was like I want to talk. Yeah, she's I'm the gonna... talkative one, and he's totally cool with it. Go ahead, honey. Do talk away. Uh, she's very articulate. I love her passion, man. Mm -hmm. She fires up when she's talking. Mm -hmm. and that's something I... Uh, one of my favorite things about them in this and about Nasiruddin and is uh, I, I've i never understood... And I talk about this with my buddy Rich all the time who were the same age. Never understood the checking out on life as you get older and like getting stuck in your ways and retiring and just having you know stodgy opinions and you become calcified in body and calcified in mind versus that mm -hmm. where you're still you're passionate and you're not just passionate about what you're doing you're a realist and about she's like oh, 10 years from now i want to remember what it's going to be like well for us it's not going to be so much and like you know in 25 years we won't be here and totally okay with recognizing that's the role we're playing in our life right now and still mm -hmm. being passionate about it yeah i love them what she said yeah. about the young people is very true, though. Very true. And it's not, I'm not just talking India uh, specific. That's all over. That's, it's all over the planet. That's, that's America. That's Iran right now. There's so many different countries since we've grown up. Yeah. My generation yeah. specifically and yeah. younger. Uh, people that grew up with the internet now. Yep. And we are more knowledgeable than any other previous generation of terms of like stuff going on. Yeah. And the reality is. And the reality is. And like governments trying to tell you one thing, but you're like, you see evidence as the contrary and yeah. all over the place. So we're very, in terms of, I think we, I don't know if that's a specific name. We are the knowledge generation of mm -hmm. having at our fingertips. Yes. If I really want to know something, I mean, no, but also the, the flip side is there's also tons of, tons misinformation. of misinformation. But also, yes. I feel like younger generations, even though parents, of, uh, my generation's parents were the ones that were like, don't believe everything you read on the internet. Right. But it's always people of your generation or older that are like believing something on AmericanEagle.gov. Exactly. <laughs> Check your sources. <laughs> like, seriously, come on, use your brain. And then, and then people of my generation are like, do you know who the f like, who's saying that right <laughs> like exactly do you believe everything on the internet right uh anyways i like what you said there i did too um and so they, i think they'd be i've wanted to talk to nisard and shaw forever but i would also love to talk to her uh, oh absolutely nisard and shaw about just he themes like it seems like a theater man he is 100 like, we knew it the moment we saw him in deborah in deborah and everything we've ever seen and heard, both in his per performances and in his interviews, is he is the he is a thespian. He is an actor's and, actor. Yes, that's why most of our like Manoj Pankaj's of the world, uh, Nawaz, always like he's 
he is who I want yeah. to be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he is the style of actor. Yeah, that and I it want goes to down be. to the core of their being. It's like he said, it's a hobby, but it's more. It's it's. I would I would venture to argue. I think it's just a hobby because it doesn't pay him as much as films do. Right. <laughs> Vocationally, which is the way for all theater actors. Mm -hmm. No one's doing it for the money. Nobody. I mean, Maybe even Nathan Lane. Well, but even he, he's not. He can make more in film. Mm -hmm. Hugh Jackman makes more in movies than he did for Music Man. Mm -hmm. But he does it. I've heard him talk. There's a really cool documentary about Broadway and uh, how it, from the buildup of it all the way through its decline in the 70s and 80s up to its, its, and Jackman was talking about it. And he said specifically, he said, of all the experiences I've ever had as an actor, none has been the most exhilarating and the most fulfilling for me as an actor than Broadway. Mm -hmm. Then the, the response I get from the live audience in the moment and also knowing, he said, if you think about this at any given moment on Broadway, at 8 p.m. Eastern, the amount of talent on display in that moment in New York City, nothing like it anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. happening at the same time on stage, live in New York. It's great. It's Saturday night. Yeah, it's great. Anyways, great interview. Love to talk to Nasir and his, Absolutely. his lovely wife, uh, yes. Ra Ratina. Ratina. Ratna. Ratna. Yeah, Ratna Pathis. Ratna. Ratna. Uh, let us know Good stuff. Uh, what their next film should be uh, down below. Josh!